Welcome to the Gotham City of the future. It's a future in which Batman has not been seen in decades, where everything is run by technology and everyone and everything depends on it. But when justice is hard to come by and corruption rules the core of the system, someone new has to take up the mantle of the bat. No, it's not Terry McGinnis. Because in 1990, the Batman of the future was James Gordon. Critical Blast. Where pop culture gets blasted. In 1990, pop culture was having its second love affair with Batmania. After the Tim Burton films starring Michael Keaton as the Caped Crusader, the market was hot for any new Batman merchandise, and DC Comics was ever ready to offer some new take on the Batman mythos. Batmania 2 converged with something else that was on the forefront of everyone's radar, the internet, accessed at the time by using dial-up modems to connect to local servers. Now let's give Pepe Marino some props here. He definitely had a keen grasp on where this technology was going. Moreno is the writer and artist of Batman Digital Justice, the product of the popularity of Batman and a just-realized fear of all-too-real technology, bolstered by films like Robocop, Terminator, and Blade Runner. But DC needed a bigger hook than just a plot. They needed the book to be something special as an object. And so Batman Digital Justice was touted as one of the first comic book projects to be computer generated. Unfortunately, while it made for interesting images, the ease of use tools also made for a boring story. The ability to clone images from panel to panel became monotonous and we saw the same faces repeated throughout the book, sometimes in different panels on the same page. James Gordon is a police officer in Gotham Megatropolis, where surveillance is everywhere and everyone is a number in a machine, identified by DNA at the scan of a laser. The net runs everything. But the net is corrupted. Something is in it, and it's been there for a very long time. Gordon knows it, knows the system needs to be fought, but the enemy is this nebulous bureaucracy, and he doesn't have any idea what to strike at or how. That's when he finds his grandfather's old things, his grandfather being Commissioner Gordon. Among the clippings of Batman exploits, he finds a costume and a note from the retiring Batman. Realizing this could be his answer to fighting the system, he puts on the costume and sets out to right wrongs, prompting the world to wonder, is Batman back? His appearance prompts several inspirations. With almost the turn of a page, he has acquired a Robin, and pop culture phenom Gata decides to take over her already insanely cultish image as Catwoman. Gordon also triggers systems that end up with him and the new Robin being taken to the Batcave, where a computer AI developed by Bruce Wayne greets them, as it's been watching for someone to take over the job. Of course, the virus at the center of the net is a leftover from the Joker, and digital justice is achieved by Gordon fighting physically while the Batman AI avatar fights the Joker virus in cyberspace. There's some sort of moral at the end about relying on technology, but again, it seems more out of place in a Terminator film. Batman Digital Justice is a novelty item. It was a novelty item when it first came out, despite its then cutting-edge production standards. Almost every comic book today is drawn with the aid of computer design programs, and none of them have this pixelated look, which, granted, was a purposeful design addition to make this look as computer-drafted as possible. The repetitive faces, particularly of Gata, who has pretty much only three unique headshots in the entire graphic novel, is the true warning about relying overly much on technology, especially if you're a comic book artist. Hi. Thanks for stopping by for another Critical Blast video. The internet is a big place, and we know there are lots of other places you could be other than here, and we appreciate you being here immensely. If you enjoyed this kind of content, we hope you'll return for more. If you click the subscribe button, you'll get a little notification of when we produce new video content. If you would like to help the channel out, there are many ways to do so. Just visiting our main hub, criticalblast.com, will do wonders. But if you're more of a show me the merchandise type of person, there are links in the description of this video to our t-shirt shop, 
as well as links to Amazon for the books we publish under the Critical Blast Publishing imprint, including the urban fantasy anthology Gods and Services and the YA superhero novel Bulletproof by Stephen J. Mitchell. Thanks again for visiting this video. We hope you had a blast.